Welcome to another episode of the Hammer Down Sales and Productivity Podcast, where we're going to make you productive and not busy. Addressing the needs of business owners and planting the seed for a secure future. Do you want your business to grow and prosper without sacrificing the freedom to live the lifestyle you want? Do you want to build a company that you can cash out and sell one day so you can retire comfortably or go after the next big idea? So ask yourself the following questions. Do I want to become far more successful and productive? Do I want to grow my business to the next level? Do I want a business to work for me or me to work for it? Do I want to develop a dominating team of employees? And do I want a business that is both fun and profitable? Remember, action, attitude, and approach. And we're here to help you with that. Welcome back. Coach Wayne here. And we're going to continue with my book, The Sales and Business Survival Guide, Saving or Improving Your Business During These Challenging Times. So we're going to pick up where we left off and we're going to talk about creating objectives and a plan. So once you've done the SWOT analysis, Take what you've learned and put it into action. Determine the objectives you'll pursue and create a plan for achieving those objectives. This will give you the clarity you need to move forward. So start with your strengths. How will you double down on things that you already are doing well? Does your sales or your sales team have a high close ratio? Focusing on getting more prospects into the pipeline. Do you have a large email list? Are you working on converting them from just casual lookers to into buyers? Then we need to look at your weaknesses. How can you challenge yourself to change, minimize, or even eliminate these areas? Is your profit margin low? Are you creating a plan for reducing your cost? Do you have the trouble uh, retaining customers? So now we need to develop a customer retention strategy. And then moving on to opportunities. Is there a new market that you can move into? Can you implement a new technology that will help you be more efficient? Determine the greatest opportunities that lie in front of you. And the steps you'll take to capitalize on those opportunities. And then finish with the threats. How will you avoid or adapt to those things that could hurt your business? Do you need to take steps to adjust to new customer preferences? Do you need to change your pricing strategy to keep up with your competition? Remember to create both objectives and a plan for how you'll meet those objectives. It's not enough to say, I want to increase my profit margin. You need to determine the specific steps that you'll take to make that happen. So your objectives need to be measurable. You must be able to determine whether you've hit your objective or not. Are they achievable? Be realistic in your expectations. Aim for things that you think you can actually achieve and then push a little farther. And are they timely? Set a specific date by which you'll meet your objective. This is imperative. This will give you a sense of urgency. So first, we'll start with reducing your costs. If you want your business to survive and thrive during difficult times, you'll need to reduce your costs or increase your revenue. However, be careful and precise as you do this. You cut too much and your business may have a hard time recovering. Cut them too little and you won't free up enough cash to keep your business going. So my suggestion is to follow the process to reduce your costs like this. Start by cutting discretionary costs. Come up with a P&L, profit and loss statement. These are costs that aren't necessary to run your business. Business lunches is a good example for discretionary costs. Yes, it may be helpful to meet clients over lunch, but it's not necessary. You can meet them over coffee or in your office and save quite a bit of money over a year's period of time. Other discretionary costs include coffee, tea for the whole office, the highest speed internet, uh, mag- magazine subscriptions, off-site events, advertising. Look at everything. Next, 
Look at ways you can reduce costs but still achieve the same outcome. So for example, you can reduce travel costs by using video conferencing technology. You can cut IT costs by using a less expensive cloud software. Or you can reduce your utility costs by finding ways to use less water or electricity in your office. Get creative when looking at these costs. Next, consider your office space cost. Maybe the person that you're renting your space from is willing to lower your rent or even create a new lease um, that'll work to be a win-win for both of you. Explains the challenge you're facing and the possible outcomes if you don't make specific changes. And if your landlord or your leaseholder won't reduce your rent, then consider moving to a less expensive space. If your business is small enough, you may want to think about running it out of your home or out of a home office, at least temporarily. This can significantly reduce insurance costs, taxes, utilities, and others. Also, take a close look at your supply chain. Some of your suppliers may be willing to give you discounts, especially if you've been a good customer and have always paid on time. If your current suppliers don't offer discounts, explore alternatives. If a new supplier offers you a discount, you may be able to leverage that with your current supplier. Always negotiate. At some point, you'll need to think about reducing your staffing costs. This is hard for every business owner. No one wants to put someone out of a job or reduce someone's income. However, if you want your business to survive, you have to be willing to make these hard decisions. Cutting staffing costs today ensures that you'll still have a business tomorrow. So before you lay people off, look for ways you can reduce employee hours or compensation. Obviously, you'll need to communicate clearly with your employees, explain why you're cutting these things, and then how long you expect these measures to last. Remember, we talked about communication. If a reduction in hours or comp comp compensation isn't enough, you'll have to reduce your workforce. Cutting costs isn't fun. You and your employers will have to make sacrifices. You'll have to give up perks and luxuries, but it's important to look at the big picture. The actions you take today will produce results long into the future. Sacrificing in the present increases the chances of your business surviving for years to come. Next is managing your cash flow. Your cash flow is what will ultimately determine whether your business survives. Every month you have cash come into your business in the form of payments from your customers or clients. You also have cash going out of your business for expenses like rent, supplies, and salaries. Now, to be clear, when we say cash, we don't necessarily mean actual cash. We simply mean money flowing in and out of your bank account. Not having enough income in cash is one of the biggest reasons small businesses go under. When you run out of cash, you can't pay your bills, purchase supplies, or any other of the necessary tasks to keep things running. This means you need to pay very close attention to your cash flow. And here's a quick way to evaluate, evaluate your cash flow. At the end of the month, add up your total sales. Total all your purchases that you still must pay for and then calculate the difference. Super simple. But you'd be surprised how this is often overlooked. For example, let's say you have $10,000 in sales. You still owe $6,000 for purchases. Your cash flow is approximately $4,000. If you have negative cash flow, you'll need to make up the difference in the next month. The more you fall behind, the harder it is to make up that difference. So if you have accounting software, you should be able to create a detailed cash flow report relatively easily. If you find yourself struggling with cash flow, you have to look at some of these options, such as you can sell assets to bring your additional cash. For example, you could sell a company vehicle or a piece of machinery. You could get a working capital line of credit. You're given a set amount of credit from which you can draw when cash is tight and you pay back when you have surplus cash. You only pay interest on what you borrow. For example, if you borrow a $10,000 line of credit and borrow $5,000, you only pay interest on the $5,000. As much as possible, stay abreast of your cash flow. Send out invoices on a timely fashion and follow up with your customers who fall behind on their payments. Pay your own bills on time and try to plan accordingly for your purchases. Cash is really king. I would suggest that you meet with an accountant. As you work to stabilize and strengthen your, strengthen your business, you'd be wise to meet with a certified accountant. 
And there are a number of reasons for this. First, they can help you implement money-saving tax strategies. Taxes are complicated, especially when you start running a business. There are a number of specific actions you can take to reduce your tax burden. So for example, you could change the depreciation method used on your assets, defer income to the following year, restructure your business, maximize expense reductions. Because tax laws are convoluted, many of these strategies are not intuitive. An accountant can help you know what actions to take. They are the experts. Second, an accountant may be able to help you secure financial assistance from a local, state, or federal government. Because small businesses are good for the economy, many government agencies are willing to provide financial aid for struggling businesses. For example, the Small Business Association offered low interest loans and grants for qualifying businesses. Some state and city government organizations also have relief programs designed to strengthen small businesses. An accountant can help you find and secure government funding for your business. And finally, an accountant can help you think through critical financial decisions. Many business owners struggle to absorb all the financial details about their company. This is common and nothing to be ashamed of. However, if you struggle in this way, it can make it challenging to stay abreast of important numbers like cash flow. An accountant can crunch all the numbers for you and provide you with relatively easy to digest reports. They can also give you guidance as you make important decisions like what costs to cut. Remember, get a professional. Creativity is great, but not in accounting. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Hammer Down on Productivity and Sales podcast with me, Wayne Weathersby. If you liked it, please subscribe today on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. And if you would, take a second, give us a rating, or leave us a message. It would be greatly appreciated.